In 1898, the Treaty of Paris was signed and ended Spanish sovereignty in the Philippines, marking the beginning of what would be a 48-year-long colonization of the Philippines by the United States. In 1899 began what would be a three-year-long war, in which the U.S. fought with Philippine nationalists who were fighting for the country's independence from new colonizers. This war would result in the deaths of 20,000 Philippine soldiers, 400,000 Philippine civilians, and 4,000 U.S. soldiers. The U.S. strategically deployed black troops to the Philippines in order to squash the efforts of Philippine forces. It is documented that many black soldiers had conflicting feelings about the U.S. presence in the Philippines, and six soldiers eventually defected to join the Philippine nationalist cause. The concept of isang bagsak, which translates to one fall, we all fall, comes to mind. This was chanted by Larry at Leong and the Filipino farm workers during the United Farm Workers Movement. I bring this up not to say that there are things that are owed, no. I say isang bagsak to indicate that we will not be free until all of our brothers and sisters of color are free. I started the Sago Show in order to help with my own healing and my own racial identity development, and I hope that it helps others as well. And I do think that as Filipinos, we do need to heal because we have experienced a great amount of generational trauma. But that doesn't also mean that we can't help fight for others. This time in particular is a time where we must heal so that we can help others who need us urgently, to be there for them as they were there for our ancestors. In the description, I am listing organizations where I am donating. Now on to this week's episode. Hi, this is Rachel, and today I'm going to be talking about banana ketchup and my version of tortilla española. This series is called The Sago Show, where I'm exploring the roots and digging deeper into the history behind some of my favorite Filipino dishes and sweets. Today, we're talking banana ketchup. And to go along with my banana ketchup, I'm going to make tortilla española to go with it. I'm going to start out by slicing three potatoes using this mandolin that literally cost two dollars and you might think, hey Rachel, why don't you buy a higher quality mandolin? Well, most of the time a knife is going to do it for me and I'm not trying to pay 20 or 30 dollars for something that I really won't use. However, if you do know a good value mandolin, maybe hit me up in the comments below. The tortilla española is a lot like an egg frittata and mine is going to have potato, onion, and longanisa or Filipino sausage. Making tortilla española will require a flip, so I do want to come out of the gate early by saying that if you're looking for something like how to perfectly flip a tortilla española or tortilla flipping techniques, I highly recommend that you enter in those exact search terms into YouTube and check out one of the hundreds of results on this. Um, I don't think I should have to say this, but I'm not a real chef, so this is by no means perfect. You also will need to thinly slice a half of an onion. You actually only need half of this, half of this half, because I'm going to use the other half or the quarter of an onion for the banana ketchup. That was so difficult. Now, I have a 12 inch pan, so I will need about 10 eggs to create my tortilla española. You can adjust down three to four eggs if you have something like an eight inch pan. So now I've added an insane amount of olive oil to my nonstick pan, like enough that I'm gonna be able to dunk all of my potatoes and submerge them. I do this over medium low heat because I don't want these to fry, I just want them to get soft. And I don't have a lid, so I'm gonna actually just use this sheet pan every so often checking the potatoes and moving them around. Again, you don't want them to be brown or crisp up at all, this will take about 15 minutes and I'm gonna use this meshy metal spoon to remove the potatoes after that. Then we can add our sliced quarter of an onion and cook in the oil for about three to four minutes until they are translucent. Now I'm going to add the longanisa, which I actually bought this skinless, but you can use um, the longanisa with skin if you prefer. And you can also leave this totally out. We just need to cook the meat through on medium-high heat, maybe about five to six minutes. And then I'm gonna drain all of this and reserve the cooking oil for when we cook the tortilla later on. 
Meanwhile, let's flip over to the banana ketchup. And I'm so excited to talk about this today and give you a little history about Maria Orosa, the woman who invented it. First, I'm going to roughly chop two cloves of garlic, grate a thumb of ginger, and then take three ripe bananas and mash them up. I'm going to saute the onions a bit and oops, my pan is way too hot. We should just be over medium heat. Just sweat these out for maybe a minute and then I'm adding the garlic and the ginger. Just continue to saute these for another two minutes and then season with salt and pepper. Next, I'm gonna cheat a little bit by adding two tablespoons of tomato paste for color and some tang. So store-bought banana ketchup doesn't have any tomatoes, hence the name, but it does have red number 40, which I don't have. And I'm gonna add a one teaspoon of garlic powder here and half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Lastly, a quarter cup of vinegar and a quarter cup of water. Finishing this out by simmering for eight to 10 minutes. While this is simmering, I'm gonna start telling you about Maria Rosa. Born in the Philippines, she traveled to study at the University of Washington in 1916, where she earned her graduate degree in pharmacy. She also studied food science as well. Maria knew that as a result of the U.S. occupation, the country was very reliant on imported goods like tomatoes. And we're gonna add in the banana mash at this point and just keep stirring for 10 minutes she set out to dedicate herself to learning about food science and food preservation, and much of her work was done with the goal of making the Philippines more self-sustaining and less reliant on goods that have to be imported from other countries like the U.S. After her studies, she was able to formulate a ketchup recipe that did not use tomatoes, but used bananas, which grow abundantly in the Philippines. Maria did many other things like travel to the barrios in the Philippines to empower women in agriculture, she fought in World War II and fed Filipino prisoners of war. She ended up developing over 300 recipes and inventions, including one that I'd really like to call out, calamansi juice powder. Yum. After it's cooled, you can blend it up and see that it has this thick texture and isn't the same deep red that you see from store-bought banana ketchup that has food dye, and it's actually more of an orange. We'll set this aside until after we're done cooking the tortilla. All right, now back to the part I've been procrastinating. So I'm gonna give my eggs another quick whisk and season with salt. Add in the potatoes, onions, and longanisa together. And I will be just super nervous about this. We'll pour this into the skillet that has my reserved oil and has been heated to medium. And basically I'm just using my spatula to push up on the bottom so that the egg can fill in the holes and cook. The goal is for the bottom to cook a bit before we flip. And once again, please remember that I'm not the Bon Appetit channel, okay? And just like my mom does it, I'm gonna slide the tortilla onto this plate and it definitely looks like my plate is too small. I can already tell this is not gonna work. And yep, I just spilled so much egg and I'm just gonna cool off and sulk. So then I'm going to just cook this for a few more minutes to firm up the egg on the bottom and it doesn't really look that bad and I'm super excited to just taste it and I like mine less a little on the less cooked side like my mom does it but I'm really just so ashamed of how this all turned out that I'm just gonna do this a different way. So now that I've learned that I don't have a large enough plate here is a non-flip method that will taste just as good at least to me. I'm gonna do the same thing, same mixture, and I've turned on my oven broiler while this is going. We'll cook this over medium low in the cast iron skillet and just poke around here and there for five minutes until I see that there's a thin layer that is cooked on the bottom, but it's okay that it, it's pretty uncooked on the top. Then I'm gonna just stick this under the broiler for three to five minutes and you can err on the side of less time if you want it to be more runny. And once you take this out of the oven, there's this lovely little browning on the top and this looks so pretty and you don't have to flip anything, amazing. And here in this shot, you can see lots of pretty potato layers and this is gonna be the perfect thing to accompany the banana ketchup. I definitely ate this immediately. It's one of my favorites and I thought that the banana ketchup tastes really similar actually to the store-bought version, but the banana flavor is much more natural. I thought it was so fun to learn about Maria Rosa and how banana ketchup came to be, so I'm linking some articles about her and her contributions in the description.
If you and your family have a different way of preparing tortilla española, or if you have even more Maria Rosa facts, let me know in the comments below. And if you liked what you saw today, like this video and subscribe to my channel so that you can stay plugged in with the upcoming episode next week on The Sago Show. Salamat!